Hey guys, Matt here from mksmarthouse.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the software for the door sensor using a Mac. So in the last video we left off with the door sensor being fully built, so all it needs is firmware and to be connected to the home automation server. So let's start off with the firmware. I recommend having my website open so that way you have all the steps and commands ready. And so you do not have to type in everything, you can just copy and paste. I know this is the software video, but there are some hardware things that we need besides the computer. We are going to need an Arduino of some kind, preferably an Uno or a Mega equivalent, with its USB cable of course, and mail to mail DuPont jumper cables. Links to these items will be in the description or on the website. The first thing we are going to do is grab the Arduino and put a jumper from reset to ground. Then grab the door sensor and connect all the pins to their corresponding spots. So TX to TX, RX to RX, ground to ground, and 5 volts to 5 volts. Before we continue, check to make sure the 2 pin jumper is above program, PGM. Next we are going to go to the computer and go to the Arduino website. Scroll down to download the Arduino IDE and click Mac OS X, then press download. Next, go to Finder and your Downloads folder. Drag the Arduino application to your Applications folder. Then click on Launchpad and then on the Arduino application. When it asks you if you want to open, click Open. Great, we installed the Arduino IDE. So now plug in your Arduino. If you're using a Chinese Uno like me, there's one more thing we have to do, which is install the CH430 drivers. So go to this website, a uh, link will be on my website and it should automatically download the driver. Then go to Finder and your Downloads folder. Open the folder and double click on CH43X underscore install package. Go through the setup by clicking continue then install and type in your admin password and press install software as well as clicking continue installation. Once it is done, click restart and if it asks you, you can say move to trash. When your computer is back up, open up the Arduino ID again. To confirm your Arduino is connected, in the top bar go to tools and if you hover over port, you should see uh, slash dev slash cu dot wch usb serial uh, and then some numbers. If you can, then select it. Now we are going to add the ESP8266 boards, so go to Arduino, then preferences, and in Additional Boards Manager, type in this URL. Again, it'll be on my website. Then press OK. Next, go to Tools. Then hover over Board and to the right, click Boards Manager. In the search box, type in ESP8266. It should be the first one and it should say ESP8266 by ESP8266 Community. Click on it and press Install. Once it is installed, press the Close button. Now go back to tools, hover over board and go to the right and scroll down and click generic ESP8266 module. Next we are going to add the MQTT library. So go to sketch and in the drop down hover over include library and in the right click on manage libraries. In the search type in MQTT. Scroll through the list to find the one that says MQTT by Joel Gailweiler. Click on it and press install. Once installed, click close. Great, all the prep work is complete. Close out of Arduino and now all we have to do is grab the code so we are going to head over to my site. The link is in the description to the exact page and press download MK door sensor firmware. On the new page, press download. Then go to your finder and downloads folder and double click on the mk-doorsensor.ino. A pop-up will come up asking if you want to put it in a folder. Click OK. It should bring up the code for the door sensor, and there are only a few things we have to change. The first thing is the Wi-Fi settings, which are the SSID and password, so change those according to your network. Please keep in mind that the ESP8266 only works on 2.4 GHz, so type in your 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi SSID and password, not your 5 GHz. Also, when adding the information, only change what is inside the quotation marks. Next set of parameters are the web updater settings. The devices I designed are great because I implemented a web user interface 
for each individual device. So that way if you ever have to flash new firmware, you just go to its web address. The web address information is found at the top of the code in the giant comment block. The first parameter is the host name of the device. Usually I only change the last digit, but since this is the first door sensor, I will keep it as it is. Next is the update path, and I personally don't change that. After that is the web user interface, username, and password. These are the credentials you use to access the web page because each device is protected. The next set of parameters are for MQTT. The first one is the out topic, and this is the topic for the device sends commands or, or messages to on the server. The next one is the MQTT server IP address, and this is simply the IP address of your home automation or open app server. The last one is the unique device ID, and this simply differentiates each device on the MQTT side. I usually just change the last digit for every single device. That is it, the code is ready to be flashed, so go to tools and make sure the board is generic ESP8266 module and the port is slash dev slash c dot wch usb serial and then some numbers. Once those are good, press the upload button. It is the one with an arrow pointing to the right. When it is uploading, you should see dots moving at the bottom and some percents. After it is done uploading, you should see it say 100% and done uploading. To confirm that it flashed correctly and is working, you can fire up mqtt.fx, connect to the server, and in the subscribe section, type in the pound symbol and press subscribe. Now if you separate and bring together the two contacts of the door sensor, you should see it either say open or closed depending on its current status. If you, don't, if you do not have mqtt.fx, then check out my home automation server setup guide. Now that we know it works, let's close up the device and get it ready for use with the home automation server. First, unplug the DuPont wires in between the Arduino and the device. Then take the two pin jumper and move it over so it is above run. After that, take the lid to the device and put it on. Finally, plug the device into the wall. Now the device is complete and just needs to be added to OpenApp. So SSH into your Pi or whatever your server may be. The first thing we're going to do is create the door sensor item. So type in sudo nano slash etc slash openapp2 slash items slash home dot items and press enter. You may need to type in the admin password. Then type in the comment forward slash forward slash security items. Then underneath that we are going to create a software switch to control the security system. Type in switch security system parentheses security system and press enter. Now we are going to create the actual item. So type in what is on the screen now or what is on my apps on my website because this is very long and not worth reading because you can just see it. And press enter. Now let me go over the two items we created. The first one is a dummy switch and we will implement it later more in the rules. What it will do is turn the OpenHab security system on and off. The second item is the door sensor. This is the line you would replicate if you had more door sensors. Anyway, the first part is the contact, and since this device is a door sensor, we use the contact type. The next part is the item name, and I just used its host name without the dash. After that is the label text, and it is what shows up in the interface and how it is formatted with the name and value. Next to that is the icon name, which is what picture shows up in the interface. Then lastly, we have the MQTT path to device, and there is the out topic that we coded into the device. Now press Control X, then Y, and enter. Next up is the sitemap file, so we can see the device status and our switch. Type in sudo nano slash etc slash openup2 slash sitemaps slash home.sitemap and press enter. It will bring up the sitemap. If you are following along with my series, then we have many different frames in our sitemap. I'm going to replace what is in the security frame with our new items. So delete the demo switch and type in switch item equals security system and press enter. And line up your cursor underneath the S in switch and type in text item equals MK door sensor one. What we did is import the items into the sitemap. Now press control X, then Y and enter. Before we go any further, let's confirm that everything works. So go to your web user interface and then basic UI. You should see the security system switch, which right now does not do anything, 
but you should also see the door sensor, or in my case, the side door. And if you open and close the contacts, you should see the status change. Great, it all works except the switch, so let's fix that and make the security system do something. In terminal, type in sudo nano slash etc slash openop2 slash rules slash home dot rules and press enter. In the file, type in this giant code block that you see on my screen or on my website. Let me explain what this does. It checks for whenever the door sensor sends open, and if it does, then it checks for if the security system is on. And if it is, then it sends every user you set up in myopenhab.org a notification. Now press Control X, then Y, and enter. Go back to the basic UI and make sure the security system switch is on. Now make the door sensor closed, then open. If everything works right, and if you have a mobile device set up with OpenHab, then you should get a notification. Also, if you turn off the switch, then you will not get notifications. That's it, the software is complete. Now all we have to do is install the device in its final place, which will be completed in the next final installation video. All right, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or head over to the mksmarthouse.com forum where we have a better chance of getting answered. Goodbye.